deep-sea science, deep-sea environment, deep-sea operations, we would have gone faster and we would have been much quicker in having success and the success would be probably greater so far. So definitely that is a point where synergy in terms of achieving together what you can't achieve alone would have helped. Um, uh, even though you excluded the word money, uh, I, I would like to make one comment on money, and that is uh, in terms of synergies for the future. I think that even though of course the, the overall amount of available money is, is not extendable, uh, it may well be that uh, the share of the money that is available to our science <coughs> will depend on how we present our science. And my feeling is that we can gain a lot from aligning our arguments and funding requests as far as possible. This is a very difficult thing because we have to deal with a variety of funding agencies, uh, even different in different countries, uh, and we have different cycles of funding and different rules of funding. But I think that is maybe also a plea to, to us for to OPEC to help in that, because I could imagine that Combining deep sea science, environmental science, neutrino astronomy uh, with an overarching multidisciplinary umbrella would give a lot of credit and, and extra credit points to our, to our requests. Speaking about uh, bottlenecks uh, in looking at the ocean, I, I, you have some uh, months because we have a long list, because probably we have more bottlenecks than <laughs> that we, we uh, much unknown. No? Uh, and this is, this is also the, the, the salt of our, our, our work. You know? If you, if you know, know everything, uh, no interest at all. Uh, coming back to the, this is difficult to talk to, to a few, few seconds or minutes uh, answer to this fish, uh, but uh, it's uh, quite, uh, quite, uh, quite important. Coming back to the to the uh, synergy, you know, I think that uh, we can where well, we can work together. We can uh, think about uh, the laboratories and the water laboratories as a sort uh, of uh, Renaissance uh, lab in which uh, all to, all different all different disciplines come together. Probably someone uh, searching for some something, but we discover some some other else. But it's probably also at the results uh, and uh, and build up uh, real open mind people I don't want to uh, hear do you don't you cannot do something because you are uh, you are in another field I don't want to see uh, to hear that uh, some some field is ancillary with respect to other and to build up people, young people, with a real open mind to, to face you know, the, 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 the bottlenecks, some of them, but not, not all. Uh, I've got two, two slightly separate points. Um, the first is that we haven't actually, uh, I, or at least I haven't heard anyone talking about the two aspects of sustained observations, which to my mind are, are distinct, um, but use the same infrastructure. And those are the monitoring aspects of it, um, and the uh, research uh, the research aspect. So with monitoring, we are just observing to see how the system, how the, uh, the, the uh, aspects of the environment, the state variables, change in, with time. And the crucial research aspect associated with that is, and this isn't a matter of just money, but the crucial bit is how long does one have to go on doing this, at what re resolution, uh, both spatial and temporal. That's what we need to know, and that needs inspired researchers to identify how long we've got to go and do this. And the reason that's particularly important, one is because of um, it affects funding and how much we ask for, but also it, it provides the, the framework to present to our 
political masters and funding masters saying this is what we need to do to, in, a, in, a, in a, a quantitative manner, in an analytical, dispassionate manner, this is what we need to do in order to achieve this level of precision in the assessment of the trends. And we need to do it for this length of time. So that's the first bit, is on the, the sustained observing. The second bit is that sustained observatories, to my mind, have a second purpose, which is to understand the way the system works. And in that context, what we need to do is to have inspired modelers who can use the data that we acquire and interpret it in a way which then applies to the entire marine and uh, geosciences community. So those are, are different but related aspects of sustained observing. And clearly money is important, but we also need inspiration from the modeling community uh, to, to achieve those results. And I think we're making progress, but it is a bottleneck at the moment. Um, I would like to make a comment about bottlenecks about um, value added. What we're talking about here, first of all, is uh, observatories that are cabled to shore. They have, uh, under that assumption, they have power and <coughs> data conduits that are <coughs> ample for anything you want to measure. They will have um, uh, nodes or, or junction boxes where additional uh, instruments can be added. Uh, future, taken off, uh, changes made, and I think that that structure in itself provides a lot of variability for addressing um, multiple uh, obstructions to, to science, but it also, I think, um, brings, it, it invites different kinds of science to be done because the structure is there. And I think that's the real benefit of a cabled observatory. Finding the right place or, or some of the other questions, of course, need to be solved. But as we've seen from Neptune, when it's in, suddenly there's hundreds of new things that come to mind. And I think that's the real benefit for um, supporting synergy and, and making it a valuable resource. There's that uh, famous uh, quote by uh, the oceanographer at Scripps when asked to review the last century of oceanography and uh, said the most significant feature was the degree of undersampling of our oceans, that basically you could come up with any hypothesis and there wasn't enough data to prove it one way or the other. And what, what we uh, are seeing in certainly cable ocean observatories was that an effort at, open, at significant size observatories in the oceans is really for the first time a massive amount of data that comes in to allow us to be able to understand those fundamental processes and to begin to ask a different set of questions which you couldn't do before because you would never be able to get the data. Right? The synergy, I think, between the two communities uh, here uh, is more in the area of, from the Earth Sciences group, uh, uh, is how you actually deal with a whole lot of data. We've not been used to dealing with that and that then goes on to the point of, of modeling it, right? Mm -hmm. Having enough modelers. So one bottleneck uh, in, in certainly our discipline is actually having enough new, bright, young students coming through in a competitive game where today they would see maybe a career in business is the way to go rather than perhaps uh, into some of the science uh, here. So you remember that both earth science and certainly astrophysics has a cachet with bright young minds, that it's an exciting aspect of science to understand these very fundamental things. And these two things are linked, right? Our planetary body and the universe outside of that. And so I think there's the synergy is to uh, remember this aspect of why we want to do this science, all right? Attracting both. And there isn't a division. They're the, the part of the, of, the, uh, of the solar system, etc and that we have now dramatically new tools to give us the data, to allow the modeling, to ask a whole lot of new questions which society must have if it wants the planet to survive over this next century during the lifetime of, the, of these new students coming through and their kids. Thank you. Thanks,
So if I may, in order to be careful, where it's in a quarter of an hour, and then I can sit down. But uh, if I may summarize what I've got uh, uh, from you, is that essentially the format it was okay, but, but you would like more uh, to concentrate on the instrumentation with relationship to the industry as a next step. I also saw that we need to identify ISA to discuss to discuss key sites, key sites and their specificities. What could we do in some sites so that we can get some? And then, of course, the data access issue and how we organize. It. So the proposal would be that I mean, Aspera was sort of try to initiate the process. It's not, of course, to continue always until Aspera. It's, we have the second step is that the organisms that are from European and also hopefully there it's a global issue and not a, so simply a European issue. I think uh, we should, your next meeting should be organized with ENZO, with, uh, with the, uh, the, the other the other organs from NSF, from the uh, naval research, all these uh, people, we should try to organize probably something something around the instrumentation with relationship to industry. This we know how to do in Aspera. We have organized, I told you in the first day, organized already three meetings around that. But also a more political meeting, which I don't know if we will do all together. Uh, we have to see, uh, and probably we'll have to give it some time uh, for the identifying sites that we would like to invest on, and then of course the data access. Do I summarize uh, what we've heard, I think? Sorry. It was a, actually, you were also in the round table. I don't know how you, your, your name was. But anyway, you were. <laughs> I don't see why we are not, but it anyway, doesn't matter. You, you express yourself. So, is there any. Is it sufficient? Do we want to, to go to more, more comments about that? Uh, we said most probably we need now to initiate some uh, some getting together of the responsibles of the different uh, programs to along with a program that along lines of instrumentation to start with site selection site discussion and data access and then of course from this will come the replies common replies for instrumentation and European global calls it will come uh, formulating uh, this thing that you said, the best grid, the best sampling. Actually, this is a statement we had put already now in the brochure, the, the, the century of under sampling. We put it in the brochure you have because it's a very important uh, statement. So did I keep complete the discussion? I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... I mean, we're all dreaming of the bottleneck. <laughs> speakers were uh, extraordinary, I don't know, I find it, uh, we, I mean, it's probably the, the organization committee should be con uh, congratulated also for choosing so many excellent people and getting so many interesting talks. Of course, the organization committee is else, it's Franz von Haaren, it's Ino Grafiotti, I helped a little bit. 
So that's the first statement. I think it was a very nice, uh, a very nice conference. Also, the hospitality was great. The, the choice, uh, the wines, the choice, everything was great. <laughs> were great. I think uh, we had discussed. But we found that in the beginning we thought that we were a bit parochial, that we were too much in, in our uh, disciplines. But uh, I think everybody then finally uh, determined that we were not so parochial after all. We are working together. <coughs> I, I, I retained your phrase, which I liked very much, that uh, uh, the sea world is still a hunter-gatherer uh, state of civilization. <laughs> and, uh, and we have to go to the analytic evolution where we find a place to sit <laughs> and uh, try to create a home around and, and make some, some work. And the home, the home can be a cable observatory. And this, this is what I gather from that. And hunter-gatherers are nomadic people that do not collaborate. But then once they, you get a city, it's, it's better. So let's try to make this into a disciplinary city. And that's one of the statements. And I have a, a last slide. I found uh, also statements just to since we talked about synergy. I found some statements to take uh, with you. I think that Wagner was wrong when he had the soldier say, Leer is das Meer, bleak and empty is the ocean. You all know this, of course, from the T.S. Eliot in the wasteland, but it's not empty. I think we've learned that it's full. And then we should compare it to, since there was the synergy thing, there is a, a very nice statement says T.S.T. Thales, a chrono vacuum, which is, what is the sea? It's the tears of, of chronos, which means it's the tears of time, and that means it is fundamental. It is something that is fundamental, and we have to understand it as well as we understand the sky for us as astroparticle physicists. And I think this is the message we get as astroparticle physicists. We know the sky, the sky is empty. Uh, so <laughs> This guy is more empty than the sea, and that's 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 the, the message we have ourselves as you know astroparticle physicists that the sea is full and there's a lot of science in it, and we have to understand it. And there's another extraordinary statement you can find in Euripi Euripides, Iphigenia, and Taurus says Thales Ecclesi Pad Anthropon Caca, which means all man's pollution doth the salt sea cleanse, which of course it doesn't mean about real pollution of the type we know means uh, bad behavior and, uh, and all of this. But I think also this shows that it's a societal thing, it's not only a fundamental thing, it's a societal thing. And we are in it and we should be proud of it and I think we should develop it uh, at the same level of uh, outreach and explain to the others how important this is. At least for myself I come more, more convinced that sea is a very important thing than I was. So thank you for that and have a good win to yourselves.